Um, we're here as a delegation of the uh, ulama of Nigeria across the length and breadth of the country for the purpose of finding a peaceful way out of the uh, problem that is between Niger and the uh, ec economic community of West African states. Um, we have sought the permission of the President Com Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, uh, His Excellency Asuaju Bola Ahmad Tinobu, to have a role to mediate and find a peaceful way out, and he has graciously permitted us to do that. That is the reason we are here. And contrary to the reports that we have been reading in the media, um, we came to a very warm welcome. We saw things for ourselves. We were stunned. We were surprised. We further appreciated the value of hearing from both sides. We are enriched with what we have seen. Niger's school leader has said last Sunday that they are ready to prosecute President Mohamed Bazoum for high treason and undermining the security of the country. The United States, United Nations and West African leaders condemned the move, calling it a further sign that the junta is unwilling to seek a peaceful out of the crisis. West Africa's main regional broke ECOWAS expressed a shock Monday to learn about the military junta's plans for the democratically elected Nigerian president. The move is viewed as a provocation by Niger school leaders and contradicts their reported willingness to find a peaceful solution to the current crisis, the bloc said in a statement. The junta spokesperson Kano Major Amadou Abdramani, speaking on state television, said the military regime had gathered the necessary evidence to prosecute before the competent national and international authorities, the president and his local foreign accomplices for high treason and for undermining the internal and external security of Niger. Hours earlier, Niger's junta leaders said they were open to negotiations to avert conflict with the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, according to a group of senior Niger Islamic scholars who met with military insurgents Sunday in Yami. ECOWAS is thinking on how to restore civilian rule in Niger and how to reinstate Bazoum, who was removed in the military takeover last month. Although ECOWAS has threatened military intervention in Niger, it appears reluctant to deploy troops there, fearing that such a move could plunge Niger into civil war. Did this Monday evening to recall Niger's ambassador to Côte d'Ivoire for consultation. According to the Janta, the decision follows remarks made by President Alassane Ouattara after the extraordinary ECOWAS summit held in Abuja, Nigeria on July 10th, words that glorify armed intervention according to the Janta. On this military intervention, we learned that uh, the chiefs of staff of ECOWAS countries will meet uh, on August 17 and 18 in Accra, Ghana, to discuss the deployment of the standby force to restore deposit President Mohamed Bazoum in his duties. They deposit President Bazoum, whom the Janta intends to prosecute for high treasons and endangering the security of the country. The Janta said he has gathered all the evidences to that effect. In reaction to this announcement, ECOWAS considered that it was a new provocation by the Janta. So these are the latest news on this political crisis in Niger. Viewers, French to Africa reporter Abdul Razak reporting from Niger's capital, Niamey. The military coup in Niger, unlike previous ones in West Africa, has elicited a strong support from the country's youth. Viewers, Anthony Lebruto spoke to Zakaria Kanda, a citizen of Niger, on why the military takeover is seen as a unifying and inspiring event for young people across the country. 
people ask me, uh, I use for the coup or against the coup, I mostly respond I'm 100% supporting the coup. When I say I'm 100% supporting the coup, it's, it doesn't mean like I'm asking for coups to happen in Africa. That's not something we can wish for. But like, I've lived in like red line zone, actually. If you take our country, we have like the Western part and the Eastern part facing terrorism. Mm -hmm. And we say for more than 10 years that we're fighting against terrorism. But once you go on the field, you will realize that terrorism is even entertaining by politicians. It's just like people are saying they're really fighting, but they're not there. One reason that people are supporting mostly the coup is also uh, when you take the country generally how it is. We don't possess our own electricity. The water, we do not have control over it. There's less job opportunities for young people. So like mostly when you see those people um, uh, like outside, it's young people that are supporting the pool most of the time. Because they don't see light, they don't see opportunities. And it becomes in our country that corruption is like legal. What are you hoping that who will change about the, you know, the future of Niger? I think if you take the, like the Sahel region, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, we share the same realities. We are like the same people, if I can say, the same people. We are all fighting against terrorism. Mm -hmm. But like those terrorists are gaining more and more space in our countries just because we're not really fighting on the field. We're just saying we're fighting, but reality is we're just there, nothing. And when they see foreign soldiers in the country, they don't feel secure, and they can't explain that having more than, like, for example, 1,500 soldiers from France not being able to tackle and finish with terrorism in less in more than 10 years is like we're not really fighting against terrorism. Zachariah Kandu is a citizen of Niger. He spoke with viewers Anthony Lebruto. Protesters took to the streets of Conakry, Guinea, on Monday demanding that the military government return to power former President Alpha Conde. Reporter Karim Karama, Kar Kar Kamara has more from the capital, Kunakri. The demonstrators were chanting hostile slogans against junta leader Colonel Mamadi Domboya, whom they accused of intending to hold on to power. They also called for the immediate release of all political prisoners. Some of the banners said that the third term in office of President Alpha Conde was far better than the junta. The protesters we are mainly supporters of former the post president but we are joined by other hungry youth and passers-by coalition for democratic change is accused of ignoring a national code of conduct prohibiting presidential appointees from campaigning for the government in power denise nipson has more from monrovia the national code of conduct for all public officials and government employees was first enacted in 2014 under the administration of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Portions of it were amended in 2022. The law states that appointed officials shall not engage in political activities, can vice or use government facilities, equipment, or resources in support of partisans or political activities. It also states that officials shall not serve on a campaign campaign team of any political party or the campaign of any independent candidate. But officials of President George Weah's government are seen actively canvassing for the ruling CDC party ahead of the October 10th general elections. Mo Ali is the spokesman of Liberia's main opposition United Party, UP. We should understand that the CDC has been violating laws of this country, the Constitution, from the very inception of this government. Nearly all of them that are campaigning, the Governance Commission Chair, the Maritime Boss, the Minister of, of Information, the Minister of Finance, they are so many using government vehicles, more than 90% of what they use in, even facilities. Jefferson Koji is the Secretary General of the ruling CDC. He says those who believe that laws are being violated should go to court. The court of conduct was a very beautiful decision, but it still remains an incomplete process. People who believe that government officials are, are in violation of, of the court of conduct, this country is a, is a country of law, and we encourage them 
to seek legal remedy and they should start making comments that have the proclivity to honor the peace of our country. Councilor Tiawan Gonglo is a human rights lawyer and the presidential candidate of the Liberian People's Party. He says the We Are government is in violation of the law. The president of Liberia, who was elected on CDC ticket, is neglecting his duty to appoint an official of government, the ombudsman, but he's saying, you know, don't blame us because we are not under the ombudsman. They decided to the, the president of Liberia not to appoint an ombudsman because they intended to violate it. Code of conduct is a law because it was enacted, signed by the president, and published by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So this is one of the actual bad governance under the CDC government. Inatu Suisa is the director of political affairs for the National Elections Commission. The code of conduct does not fall under the jurisdiction of the National Elections Commission. The commission has no authority over the code of conduct. What the commission has is that the commission qualifies candidates and gave them the authority to campaign. With the national legislature on its annual recess and presidential elections scheduled for October 10th, it is likely that any 